So today we're going to talk about the panarthropoda. These are the organisms that are related to the arthropods, they have a common ancestor with the arthropods. We're going to spend a lot of time on the arthropods because they're the biggest group and they're really interesting. But we're going to start today talking about the onychophora and the tardigrades. So I'm going to put a link to this video and it's also on Schoology so you can watch it. It shows you how the velvet worms can catch their prey by spraying uh, streams of glue basically. It's very cool to watch. Okay, so which group do you think the velvet worm belongs to? And if you read the, go through this, the correct answer is actually none of them. It's in its own group. It's not an annelid. It's not a centipede. It's not a slug. It's in its own group all by itself. So the panarthropoda includes the velvet worm, the tardigrade, which the internet loves, they're very cool, and arthropods like crustaceans and insects. So what is a clade? Panarthropoda is a clade. A clade is a group of organisms believed to be descended from a common ancestor. So if you look at this family tree, the panarthropoda is right here. All of these are descended from a common ancestor at some point. And so these are a clade. You can make a clade for these, and you can make a clade for all of these. But the one we're talking about is this particular clade. If you go back far enough, all animals are in the same clade. Okay, panarthropoda means all arthropods, and it includes three phyla. Phylum onychophora, which are the velvet worms. Phylum tardigrata, which are the water bears and phylum arthropoda, which are the crustaceans, insects, spiders, etc. Lots and lots of arthropods. Characteristics that panarthropoda all have are legs, not jointed legs, remember. Only the arthropods have jointed legs, but they all have legs. This is very different from anything else we've talked about. The only thing we might be able to say have legs are the cephalopods, but they're really not what you think about its legs. They're very different. They have claws on these legs. They have a ventral nervous system, so the main nerve cords go along the belly. They have a segmented body, like the annelids did, like the earthworms. And they have to molt or shed their skin to grow. So this is something new. It sounds like we're saying mold. doesn't have anything to do with mold. Molt just means to shed their skin. And all of the panarthropoda have to do this. Okay, phylum onychophora. This is the only animal phylum that is totally terrestrial. They all live on land. There's about 70 living species of velvet worms. Only 70 species, that's really small. Remember, there are like 40,000 different kinds of mollusks. And there's millions of kinds of arthropods. But phylum onychophora, there's only about 70. They're relatively small, anywhere from a half inch to six inches long. And they're limited to moist, leafy rainforest habitat in tropical and subtropical regions. We'll talk about why they can only live in moist habitats. Okay, so phylum onychophora has changed very little over the last 500 million years. That's a huge amount of time. Think about that. The dinosaurs went extinct only 65 million years ago. So 500 million years ago is a very long time. Half a billion years. Hallucinogenia lived around that time. We found fossils of them. And they called it hallucinogenia because it looks like something you would see in a hallucination. When they first found the fossil, they actually reconstructed it upside down and backwards. And then they found better fossils and figured out what it actually looked like. They share traits with annelids and with arthropods. So it's kind of the, the missing link between worms and arthropods, earthworms and arthropods. They've got a segmented body the long elongated body like a worm, but they've got legs and claws like the arthropods. 
Most of them are predatory. They're hunters. So they have 14 to 43 pairs of unjointed legs. Remember, they're unjointed, not like the arthropods. They have slime glands on each side of the body cavity, and they have an open circulatory system with a tube-like heart. Remember what open circulatory means. There is no, there are no arteries and veins. All of our blood is enclosed in arteries and veins, and so we have a closed circulatory system. The cephalopods were like that too, but the most of the things we're going to be talking about for quite a while have an open circulatory system. All the heart does is pump the blood from one end to the other to keep it circulating. They have a tracheal system which leads oxygen directly to the internal organs. A lot like insects, they have spiracles or little holes all along the body that lead to tubes that bring oxygen into the body of the animal. Now, most arthropods that do this can close their trachea, and the onychophorans can't. That means they lose a lot of moisture, so they can only live in moist habitats. Some of them have a social structure. You don't think about things like this, this simple, having a lot of intelligence. But this one species hunts in packs of up to 15 individuals. And they have a strict hierarchy. The dominant female eats first. The others don't get to eat until she's finished. So that's a pretty complex social structure. This is more like wolves than it's like some kind of invertebrate. So they have to be able to coordinate their attacks with each other so they can hunt together. And they have to remember who's in charge so they don't try to eat before she does. Okay, next there's Phylum tardigrata. There's a video that I've put on Schoology for you to watch. I'm not gonna play it here. Tardigrades are, or tardigrades are water bears. They're less than a millimeter in length. They can be in freshwater or marine, and they're found all over the world, on all of the continents, from the Himalayas to the deep sea. <clears throat> now, usually when we talk about animals, we'll say, yeah, they're found on every continent except Antarctica. You always hear except Antarctica. But tardigrades are found in Antarctica. They're found in the desert. When it rains, they absorb water and start moving around. I've looked really hard though and haven't been able to find them, which is sad because they're supposed to be everywhere, so I'm doing something wrong, I guess. They have eight short, stubby, unjointed legs, each with four to eight claws, and the skin is molted or shed four or more times during the lifetime. You can actually get plush toys of them. Okay. So their mouth leads to a muscular pharynx that's adapted for sucking. They have two blades in their, that can protrude like this to cut in, usually to plant cells, but sometimes small animals. And then they will suck the juices out of the plant. Suck, they'll cut into the cell and suck out the cytoplasm. They share many characteristics with arthropods, but they don't have jointed legs. Their legs are there, but they're not jointed, and they have no outer shell. There's no circulatory or respiratory organs. Gas exchange occurs at the body surface. And the brain is relatively large for something like this, as a pretty large brain. When you have really small animals, you don't really need a respiratory system or circulatory system because the surface area to volume is so small that they can just absorb oxygen through the skin and it, it can get everywhere it needs to. Now here's where they really get strange and this is one reason the internet loves them besides the fact that they're kind of cute. They can enter a state called cryptobiosis where metabolism is undetectable. Crypto means hidden, bios means life, so we're in the, when they're in this state, you can't tell that they're alive. They can dehydrate from 85% water down to only 3% water. They retract their head and legs and become something called a ton. 
you can see they coil up into a ball everything shrivels up and they can stay that way for a very long time and in this state they can withstand terrible environmental conditions that would kill almost everything else now you can't really say that they on the internet they imply that they can walk around through volcanoes and all of this kind of thing walk around in empty space but they can't do that they're not really active when they're in this state they're they look just like this they're not doing anything but while they're in this state they can withstand incredible environmental conditions they can stay in that state for decades possibly over a hundred years but we haven't really found any that we know are a hundred years old and woken them up again when water is available they become active again So some of the things that can survive, temperatures as low as minus 458 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as 304 degrees Fahrenheit. 304 degrees Fahrenheit is 100, almost 100 degrees above the boiling point of water. They can withstand a thousand times the radiation of other animals. They're the only animals so far that we found that can withstand the vacuum of space and they can withstand six times the pressure of the bottom of the ocean. Incredible conditions that would kill almost any other life form. It's another video that I've put on Schoology for you to watch. Okay, so TARDIS. Tardigrades in space. In 2007, tardigrades were sent into space. Those exposed to vacuum revived with no problem. They put them on the outside of the space station. Now, the ones in shade didn't have any problem. The ones that were exposed to vacuum and solar radiation, so the sun was shining on them, only 12% of those survived. But that's still pretty amazing. More recently, an Israeli probe was supposed to land on the moon, and it had an experiment containing tardigrades. It crash-landed. And so now there's tardigrades scattered on the surface of the moon. Are they still alive? We don't know. Um, they're not going to colonize the moon because, like I said, in the vacuum of space, if there's no liquid water, they can't walk around. They're just in that hibernation, hibernating state, cryptobiosis state, the ton. But could they still be alive? We don't know. Very fascinating animals, and there's tons of memes about memes about them. You can look up. Okay, that's all for today, and you have a good day and stay safe.